There are times I ask God questions, and there are times he asks me questions. And three days ago, there was a question that came to mind. And when I began to think through what the Lord was trying to minister to me, I realized that I need to teach it. The Lord was telling me that a lot of us, it is not that God is, is bad or doesn't help us, but we miss our season. And we miss our time. And when you have to do something and you do it late, you don't get the reward that you should have gotten. And when you have to do something and you do it early, you might also not get a result that you should have gotten. We all know that there are some foods you only can eat it right after it is served from the fire, right? There are some too you can put it in the freezer and be eating it hot and cold, whatever. But there are meals that God serves. There are miracles that God gives. And when these miracles are being prepared, if you are not smart enough in the spirit, you will not have it. Now, one day, I've taught this before, Jesus was going through Jerusalem. And he cried, he cried. It's not only at Lazarus' funeral that he cried. He cried and said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long for you? Why? Because you have missed your time of visitation. You have missed your time of visitation. So if a whole country can miss their time of visitation, the individuals can also miss their time. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, are you here? You've gone home. Now in the Bible, it says that there are two things Solomon said that God has given everybody. He said the race is not the swift, the battles the strong, bread to the wise, nor favor to men of skill. In other words, if you see people who are favored, favor, no. There's something the person has that you don't have. You see somebody, he's very strong. The Bible said the thing is that God has given everybody time and opportunity. Time and opportunity. Some the opportunities God has given to people. If somebody has had 10% of it, the person's life would have been transformed. Most often, people get opportunities that they don't even know it's an opportunity. They get a breakthrough and they don't even see that it's a breakthrough. Like I've said this before that God, Paul calls the devil an angel of light. What is his name? So he comes as if he's light. But when you open the box, you see darkness. So I always say that when God is giving you a parcel, the package doesn't look it. The inside is what, is what you need. But when the devil is giving you a parcel, it is Sakawa parcel, 419. The outside looks so good. But when you open it, then you know that, Kai, this is worms. Why does God's parcel doesn't look good on the outside? It's to prevent enemies from taking it. To allow only those who have discernment to know that this is my product. If you like, leave an ideal milk. Peel it off. And then leave the tin in the corner here. Somebody can be there very hungry, especially when he's lazy. We'll never go near the tin because if I have milk, part the way I'll eat my gari. There's, there is milk there. But because they've not written ideal milk on it, you will never go to pick it. Somebody to be very hungry and take a broom and say, this thing is, why is this thing here? Go there, pick it, and shake it and say, ah, it is new. They've not used it. Open it and say, tell you, say ah, it is not sport. Enjoy it. Because the person got discerning to know that he doesn't need labels to know a product. 
The problem with most Christians is that we always look for labels before we realize that this thing is good. So if you see a woman who is very beautiful and has shape, thank you, Lord. If you see a man in four by four, hi, and he's talking to you, Lord, I give you praise. Am I talking to somebody here? It's not true. Or is it true? It's not true. I was telling one of my daughters that never be too enthused about a man whose car is a gift from his father. Your father's property is not your property. Until you can see that the person by himself has an ability to generate income. Of course, having gifts from people is an asset. It's also a, 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 a legal tender. It's also a way of succeeding in life. But what if the people who are giving to you cease to give? What if the people who are giving you are no more? Then that will be the end of your life. But last week I told you that when God wanted to make Eve, he didn't consult anybody. He took Eve out of Adam. And I said anything you need in life is deposited inside you. So you only embrace what you are already expecting. So let me put it this way. If you have decided that you like this kind of woman or this kind of man, no matter the person that comes to pass, your eyes will not be opened. As soon as you see your kind, all of a sudden, your homewa, your body animals, <laughs> will begin to resurrect. Is it true or is it not true? Or is it true or is it not true? When even other people are talking to you, you don't look there. Your whole concentration is on that. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I give you praise. But when God is giving you his package, if you are not descending inside and you are relying on the arm of the flesh, you will let the good things of God pass by. But by the time I am done today, I believe that you will not allow any good thing to pass by from today. Oh, Amen. Now, why do people miss the opportunities? Why do people miss their deliverance? Now, the first thing you realize is that many people ask God, Lord, deliver me. What are you doing? I'm doing 21 days fasting. For what? For deliverance. Okay. No problem. I am doing 40 days fasting to be delivered from the power of poverty. The children of Israel prayed for 380 years for a deliverer. But when their deliverer came, they thought deliverer will come like, come, lift up your hands. I bind the demons in you, go. One day they woke up and one of their own children was, in, was found in Pharaoh's house and he comes out and he likes them. And he began to talk to them about they should have freedom. And they looked at him with Acts chapter 7 and said, Who made you Lord and the ruler over us? Many people have sucked away their deliverance by asking them, Who are you to tell me what to do? Who made you Lord and ruler over us? Was Moses Lord and ruler over us? Yes, he was, by virtue of his Egyptian connection. But he has humbled himself and come to them to help them. The question they ask him, Moses, is that, who are you? Who made you our Lord? And who made you our ruler? Let's read it. But he who did this neighbor wrong, push him away, saying, who made you ruler and a judge over us? How many of you have asked somebody this question before? Oh, you mind me. Who's only why you're to me Who are you to advise me? What experience do you have? Listen, control yourself from where you come from. You are an Egyptian. Stay there. Don't come and talk about my matter. So they drove Moses to go to the wilderness for 40 years. And come back with ability to do magic miracles, signs and wonders before they believed him. 
Because to them, if they want to see a deliverer, a deliverer should be the one who opens Red Sea. Now, do you know that Joshua took them to the promised land, but Joshua did not do any miracle. Moses did all the miracles. So Moses could have taken them to the promised land without a miracle by simply giving them counsel and advice. But see, they had a mindset of a certain package. For me to believe you, lay hands on me. Let me fall down. Let me say, Aungo, I'm the witch of Somenia. I have come today. We are 44. And today we will not go until you cast us out. So you miss a man of God who tells you that, don't fornicate. Be a tighter. Listen, listen, man of God, this is not why I came. Lay hands on me. Let me vomit. The thing is inside me. If I vomit them out, I'll be free. Doctors don't like this. Neither do pastors like it. When your patient tries to tell you the medication they should take to become okay, and yet they are sitting in front of you, that doctor, I came for you to help me. You came to tell the doctor to help you, and yet you have your own medication the doctor should subscribe for you. Then you don't need a doctor. Dr. Quack, help yourself. Are you here? You've gone home. Look at someone and say, have you told anybody who are you to help me? I didn't hear you. You, you don't have anything in life. You don't have anything. Somebody says, oh, can I help you? You look at the person from head to toe. Now, what I need, can you give to me? I only have 20 cities. Hey, Master Jai, Jai, Jai. You know how much I need? I need $1.5 million to transact my business. Yes, you need $1.5 business, but you need 20 cities to go and meet a business partner. And that 20 cities you don't have. I repeat it, that 20 cities you don't have. So you sweat and walk from here to Kolebu. By the time you get there, the business partner is gone. Why did you miss your timing? Because you did not recognize your deliverer. Somebody might not be able to pay your fees, but God can bring somebody who will buy the forms. Hey, this is not the person I'm looking for. The one God promised me who will pay my fees, graduate me, give me scholarship. I don't want how much is the form. Form, Kakasu, you will be chanting. Jai Sarov, how much is the form? Okay. There are some people who will never support you until you've gained access. It's your access that tells them that they can support you. They told Moses, Who made you Lord and ruler? That is why in Exodus chapter 3, when God even came to Moses and said, Go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, Moses was not afraid of Pharaoh. He was afraid of the people he had sent to, been sent to. So he said, if I go, who should I say sent me? Moses wanted that answer because he has been asked the question, who sent you? And God said, you know what? Tell them that the I am God. I am that I am. In other words, I become who you want me to be. I can heal you if you want to be healed. I can let you fall sick if you want to be sick. Do you know that um, Sarah, last week I was teaching about Sarah, Sarah told Abraham, go and sleep with Hagar because the Lord has shut my womb. It's not true. God didn't shut her womb, but she believed it was God, so God took it. Like one of these days, when Jesus comes, Satan will be given access to beat people. Because some of the things we do, that we say is the devil. Satan will tell God, God, please, did you see me there? I didn't participate. I was not even there at all. They wanted to do their thing. Hey, Abraham, you want Hagar? Say the truth. It's not your wife who is saying, go into my, into my mate. You wanted it all along. If, you, if not, you would have sat down and tell me. Daughter of Zion, I bind that spirit. You are talking to me. Jesus knew that he didn't want to die. So when Peter told him to go and die, what did he do? He rebuked Peter. Most often, you give consent to what you already admitted in yourself that you would do. 
Or is it true or is it not true? It is you, you make it look like they advise me to. It is not anybody who advise you to. That's what you wanted to do. The ones you don't want to do, you argue it out. Am I teaching here? Oh, look at this. Have you recognized your deliverer? Now, Moses didn't look like a deliverer. Moses didn't look like a deliverer. Not in any space. Not in any word. But Moses was able to train Joshua to fight battles, to take them out, take them on. May God open your eyes to see your deliverer. Now, the next thing that can stop you from noticing your deliverer is what I call not missing faith with what you hear. Hebrews chapter 4 says the word they heard did not promise them profit them because they did not mix the word they had with faith. Hebrews chapter 4. Let's read. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Some said mix the word with faith. I didn't hear you. You have to give first fruit, tight. Hey, Pastor Nijemo, Jessica. You just mix it with doubt. <laughs> you just mix it with your unbelief. You just confess within you what you believe. Now, the Bible said, faith is a substance of things that you've been hoping for. It's something that you've been expecting. You've been expecting, but you can't handle it. You've been expecting, you can't handle it. So when you, you hear that, pay your tithe, give your first, and God will prosper you. If prosperity is what you are really looking for, you will clap and give God praise for it because you have the solution. But because inside you, you want poverty, as soon as you had it, poverty spoke back. Your hope. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? The hope in you was... It can happen. I'm doomed. <laughs> you are hoping. What are you expecting? Most people talk, I want to succeed. They don't want to succeed. They don't want to. I was speaking with somebody who needs a child. Do you sleep with your husband? That, that any time I have to sleep with you, not hear me. I say, you don't need a child. If you need a child, you will rape him. Oh, is it true? It's not true. Me, when I see him, Jai, people won't suck our money. They tell them sleep with a mad person. Do they do it? Do they do it? They say they are too crazy. Eh? They want it. Most people don't mix. So when you speak faith to them, they don't even have hope. Now, what is hope? Hope is an expectation. So the Bible said, the expectation of the righteous shall be what? Granted. So if you are a righteous person, you should have some levels of expectation. So that the day the word is spoken, you have faith. But if you don't have expectation already, then when you hear it, it becomes hope. It is not faith. The expectation of the righteous shall be granted. It must be given. Oh, amen. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope. Hope. Anybody who doesn't have hope is sick. When Sarah said, sleep with Hagar, she had lost hope. Exactly 37, the Bible said, the bone said, our hope is lost. Our body parts have scattered. Then God asked them, him, son of man, these bones say, 
our bones, our hope is lost. Can these bones live? And look at what he said. He said, only you, God, has the answer. God said, Ezekiel, I don't have the answer. You, speak to the bones. You, you, prophet, speak to the bones. He said, ah, I thought you have the answer. God said, no, I don't have the answer. You have the answer. You see, God will always want you to put your expectation in him. But when it gets to the answer, he will not answer it for you. You've got to have an answer. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So, so many people have become so poor that if somebody tells you, oh, after church, I'll give you 200 cities. Oh, yeah, sure. Please, for me, I don't like to be disappointed, though. Why are you asking your show? You have been disappointed so much that you met a deliverer. You think you met another 419. When desires come, it is a tree of life. May your desire be granted. You may your desire be granted. So the question to ask yourself is that, you cry, what do you desire? When we were in school, there was something we say, you cry, wait till be your aim for here. And one guy said, oh, I die. I came to sleep. When others were learning, he was sleeping. And after school, he still slept. Whilst others got jobs, he was still at home sleeping. His name was called Obedai. He came to sleep. In class, he sleeps. And the heart, he sleeps. And you know why he was always sleeping? His father was very rich. When he finished school, his father, it was discovered that his father was something, something, something. And his father lost his job. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. The last time I checked, he was mental. The last time before then, I remember he was selling at Tema Station. And when he saw some of us coming, he runs. Then the last time I heard, he's gone mental. Look at somebody and say, what is your expectation? You know why this Sunday you might not get any miracle? You don't expect anything. You came because they say come. If you don't come, pastor will be angry. Okay, he says every Sunday we must come to church. We are coming. But the Bible said that if you keep the Sabbath holy and honor it, he will also bless you. He will also equip you. And so that becomes your hope. So that when the man of God said, this Sunday you are blessed, you say, I receive it, and that becomes faith, and then you get an answer. Can I hear an amen? So look at the mix the word with faith. I didn't hear you. Mix the word with what? Never hear God's word as hope. Hope is past. Faith is now. What did I say? One day I will buy a car. Is it faith? Is it faith? It's hope. Very soon I will marry. Is it faith? It's hope. I always say that when you are marrying, they never say, will you now take this one as your wife? And what will your answer be? I try. No priest will give you a woman to try. Marriage is not my try, my quay. You know you are going to fight. You know you are going to argue. You know there will be trouble. But you still say, I do. Why do you say I do? Because despite whatever the occurrence will be, there is something you want that beats the negative. So those who don't marry, those who sit down and say, hey, I do anything, what can I do? I mean, say, yeah, yeah. Most people who try life are still trying. Most people who decided to live life are living it. Life must not be tried. Life must be lived. Don't try living. 
I don't try to breathe in. I breathe in. It's a necessity. I need it. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, between the time that God gives you his word and the time that the word will come to pass, it's called a valley. Some say a valley. So, on one side, God, God says, I will change you from chair to table. Between the chair and the table is a valley. That valley, nobody can answer the valley but you. In between the promise and the fulfillment, if you read your Bible, is the valley of sin. I don't want to go in that today because it will take me another week of teaching. But let's look at the character of Joseph. Psalm 105. The NLT version. Verse 18 through 22. God tells the, um, Joseph, I'll make you great. You feed many. People will bow down to you. Wonderful. That is now called hope. It's, it's called what? Okay. Now the day Joseph shaved his beard, shaved his hair, and changed his clothes because the king was calling him, it's called faith. Did you hear me? In Psalm 105 from verse 22, the day the journey began for him to go, the Bible says they bruised his feet with fetters and placed his neck in iron collar. Wait a minute. Oh. You want to be a prime minister. The first thing they do to you when you left your father's house, they put your two legs in what? What did I say? Iron bars. And they put metal on your neck. Slave trade. They are pushing you by force. You can see that as slavery, but I saw it today as free transport. Because if they had not sold Joseph to Egypt, I can promise you, Joseph will become that, that be all the days of his life, and that promise will never come to pass. <laughs> eh, my father loves me. <laughs> my father is rich. My mother is... <laughs> that, that character doesn't bring fulfillment. I've done my own study, and I want you to do your own. When we were in school, those whose parents were rich, they grew up and became poor. And those whose parents were poor in school, now their parents are rich. And they too, their children too, will become poor. Life is a cycle. Because the one who is rich tells the child, I won't let you go through what I went through. If you have not gone through what you went through, will you be who you are? I told you the story of a rich man whose daughter was not getting married. Always driving big cars and riding in town. One of the fathers said, these cars are seized, these kids are seized until you marry. Nobody will propose to you in this car. The lady got angry. Hey, mama, mama, mama. Picked her throat, throat. A guy sat by him. He said, hello. Hi. Who are you? Hey, mama. They were married. You think that car you are sitting in will bring your husband? That is, that car is the reason why you are still single. Please, lest I forget, the Brazilian hair could be the reason you are single. When, when a guy sees your makeup, the guy says, eh, eh, master. Eh, eh, the, the, you are a lady. The guy says, let's go here. What do you want? Say, what I want? Okay. Then you just, just pick, pick and choose. Design a song. Design a song. Then the guy says, I forgot my eighty of what? Looking at what you are picking, that is his whole life savings. That is the next time you call him, he says, Oh, please, I am busy. Can we meet tomorrow? What do you want to eat? Uh, I want pizza. Pizza. You want pizza? Then the guy said, Then cook, let's eat. Ah, let's go and buy it. If you can't cook pizza, don't buy. And if a woman cook the pizza, 
Guys, if they say, I want pizza, tell them, cook the pizza. You can't cook the pizza, you want pizza every day, pizza, pizza, pizza. If you marry, you eat pizza the rest of your life. Oh, amen. amen. Sometimes, the thing you call bondage is deliverance. I'll prove it to you. The thing most of you call bondage. Eh? He's always shouting at me. He's always telling me this. He's always telling me. That is what has made you. One of the things I enjoyed most today, I appreciate my mother for. He, she beat me to all her children. My mother boom me all. Me too, I was stubborn. My mom can come from this room, and my uncle is come from this room. All of them have not belt or wire. But today, I am who I am today because of the discipline they put me through. Whilst my friends, but then we tell you, my house, there was table tennis, there was football, there was basketball. My mom can make, you can't go to somebody's house to go and play. The area I broke out my house to go and play, then me, my punishment, my room is the window. I'll be there watching them, and I'm learning. She will make sure you see your friends enjoying, and you are learning. That punishment is more painful. Next time, you will not misbehave. And she will give you all Timothy, chapter 1, chapter 2. Read and come and recite it. As your punishment. Now you say, man of God, when you preach, you can quote the scripture, it was punishment. When you sin, you must re recite Psalm 51. They can give you a jota, write all of Psalm 51. Every verse, even full stop, comma, seller, exclamation, write it, and my mom will look at it and mark you. So Psalm 51, head to toe, I can quote it by heart. Because any time you sin, you know you are going to write Psalm 51. <laughs> Most women have children. They don't let their children cook. And they say, maid, cook, maid, cook. The maid gets a good marriage. Because the maid knows how to clean the house. But the real daughter... I think I'm not preaching well. Eh, me na be brony, o brony, o brony no be crassy ni. Young man, then you won't wash, you won't clean. Then people are washing for you. House boys are cleaning. You don't know how to clean. A boy like you don't know how to fix bob. You don't. If you want to fix bob in your house, fluorescent tube, you must go and pay someone to fix fluorescent tube. That's why you'll be poor. Because it's little drops of water that makes a mighty ocean. My mom will tell you, Francis, you don't eat banku, right? Yes. Go and grind the corn. My brothers eat banku. Me, I don't eat banku. I don't eat kenke. I don't like cocoa. I don't like all those porridge things. But I'll be the one to carry the coin, he said, no car, walk. And can I said, can my younger brother follow me? Then my mom will tell me, that, are you serious? Leave them alone and go. And I'll carry the coin, cry. <laughs> and I'll come, they will cook the meal, and they will cook my rice for me, because I don't eat some. Today, that's why I'm not greedy. That's why I can give, and if you don't give back to me, I don't get worried was I learned to serve my family. I know you won't clap because you know you are too that I be to make it.